And that's why Elma is best girl! Thank you for that egregious display of passion. Alright, Laura. You're up. Please don't let this be about anime. Oh, don't worry, it's not gonna be about anime. Komi Can't Communicate is a slice-of-life manga created by Tomohito Oda, about a young high schooler with a communication disorder, forced into social isolation by the worship of her peers. But I don't just want to summarize the manga, I want to discuss it, specifically about the thesis of getting to know someone for who they are. From the first one-shot to the latest chapters, with every single new friend made, people are found to be much more than their cliches. All it takes is talking to them. And our best example is the titular character, Komi Shoko. Here is a girl who is literally deified by her classmates, put on a pedestal for her beauty and grace, and wants absolutely none of that idolization. She just wants friends, people who see her as she is, just a normal girl who likes cats, trying out new things, and being with others. The first person to finally see the real Komi is Tadano, during the iconic chalkboard scene. And as more new people come into her life, increasingly pushing her out of that imposing solitude, she begins to rise to each extroverted challenge. Soon, Tadano becomes less of a crutch and more of a close friend for Komi, and eventually someone that Komi can confidently say she is in love with, at least to a few people. None of that was an easy feat, mind you. Komi has had this mental wall that she has worked the entire manga to overcome, pushing for every word she manages to speak to others. That effort forged her into a person who can reach out to strangers in times of trouble, who can stand up for herself and communicate on a deep, emotional level with her closest friends. I mean, spoiler, her entire friendship with Manbagi was built and continues to stand through open, honest communication. That's a feat first-year Komi could have never imagined. She talks to her, understands her, and in turn is understood. It's clear that Komi has far outgrown her silent beauty position at the school. And that's why I feel so weird about her status as a waifu icon, the road all manga girls go down. From Chika, to Nagataro, and everyone in this picture. If she's a girl in Japanese hand-drawn media, she's bound to be brandished against other waifus like a holy cudgel. Ignoring all the usual arguments against waifu culture, Komi's case in particular, I believe, stands in stark contrast to her character arc. Placing Komi on this superficial pedestal, defined by her most marketable quirks, ignores the fact that those traits no longer define her. I'd like to clarify, I am not talking about fan art, fan works, or other creative endeavors inspired by the series. In fact, most aspects of the fandom are completely normal. The Komi community has been host to many hilarious chats and beautiful works of art, and it's amazing how this series has touched so many people. No. I'm talking about otaku culture, where Komi is treated as a religious idol rather than a character. Picture the stereotype. Some person to just blaze through a series and immediately latch onto the lead. Whatever plot may progress in the story, they'll make sure to hook on that one in-joke and beat it to death. They steal pinups from Pixiv and Twitter, plaster their walls and screens with their visage, and never miss an opportunity to make things edgy. They've got all the memes for all the reactions, and will barrage anyone to acknowledge them. Even if those in question didn't ask. Far be it from anyone to bring up a flaw of their fave, lest a torrent of lols and you just don't get its replies besiege the critic, although with much less tact than that. Their waifu is treated like a collectible, to be cherished and mounted like a trophy alongside her peers, unchanging and unchallenged. I may just be describing the typical anime fan stereotype here, but it's a stereotype that otaku embrace. Just think of all the trash taste and degenerate self-deprecation memes you've ever seen. Otaku culture takes something relatively pure and perverts it through a single-minded obsession. I worry that a similar obsession with Komi will further twist in the fandom. We'll slowly drift away from engaging critically with the series find a couple of memes and in-jokes to repeat ad nauseum, and continue to claim not to loot her, but let's face it, she's fair game. And I know Oda only encourages these things with his own waifuization of the female characters. He's made plenty of full-page pinups that accentuate Komi's elegance and model-like qualities. They're well-drawn, high-quality, and arguably a staple of the series' artwork. 
Do you think there would be quite as much fandom around her if she were depicted as a typical 15-year-old girl? Because Japanese high school girls don't actually look like Komi, you know. So, same story, same art, just no curves, no glamour shots. She'd lose that anime girl flavor that so many people can't seem to get enough of. And it's a shame, because honestly, so many of Komi's best moments are when she's drawn just as silly and cartoony as the other characters. By single-mindedly focusing on just the titillization, the fandom ends up becoming like her classmates, viewing Komi only as this model to obsess over. I believe we are better than that. We don't just have to settle for low-tier memes and the same pinup shots copied all over the subreddit. Look, there have been a lot of great things to come from fans and their passion for the series. I can't emphasize that enough. I love it when people in the fandom actually get up and make that anime we're long overdue for. I myself made some of my first online friends through this series, bonding over stupid jokes and talking over the latest chapter. And I'd love for others to critically analyze the series too. For example, as much as I love how far we've come with our main characters, there has been a lot of flanderization as the series has gotten simpler and spread thin with its designs. That's the reason the Jimmy and Katai are more comic relief now than they ever were before. And it's a shame we've lost that potential character growth they could have had. Like, Katai used to have an inner monologue, and the Jimmy was much more of an actual person than a shitlord and it shows in both of their interactions with Komi. They could have had their own Manbagi character moments, given the time. But in the end, that's all just hypothetical. This otaku problem is not exclusive to Komi. It's a widespread issue that plagues anime culture. And when that culture reaches the mainstream, we are going to have to confront these problems. Are we treating these characters appropriately? Are we taking the right lessons from these stories? Are we taking the jokes way too far? That's all I'm advocating here. To look at how we consume the series and ask ourselves if we're doing it in a healthy way. If we're not careful, all that worship is going to turn the fandom into Yamai. Thank you. Okay, thank you, Laura. That was an interesting first presentation. Remember, if anyone has any comments, be sure to leave them below. The light switch on the iPad. Joe, you're next. Thanks, Professor. My presentation is on why Toru is best girl. You take that back, motherfucker!